Coming at you straight out of Anchorage, Alaska. It's Brave in the K Hive. Hey. And it's my birthday week. That's right. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So <clears throat> you're going to be hearing like noise behind me because I got my heater on again. It's really freezing out here. You guys don't understand what Alaska's like. So when you, you're going to hear like, that's my heater in the background and that's my fan. Shut up. I have my hand, my fan and my heater going at the same time. And I have like the window cracked because I need air. So <laughs> I will talk close to the microphone like this. No, <laughs> so you can hear me over everything else. And then Mike's in behind me. He's sleeping because his back hurts. So he's at home. So, you know, just bear with me, okay? So I am trying to do three episodes a week to where um, <clears throat> to where I am doing like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we'll just won't do anything on the weekends um, because I want more episodes out and I, I enjoy, you know, just getting it out, just saying whatever I got to say, even though I have, I have speech problems. <laughs> I trip over my mouth, blah, 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 blah. but whatever, okay? So... This week, the last episode, I just spent half the episode um, laughing at Bernie and the revolution, right? So I was laughing at Bernie and the revolution because they're losers and they lost. And I don't mean this in a mean way. I'm just saying like, you know, we lost early and um, Bernie's about to lose. He's not going to make it. Um, <clears throat> but the next, uh, I just want to tell you when the next, um, we have the, the next um, debate is, go is coming up and it's going to be in Arizona. So they announced today that there's going to be a debate in Arizona, and then they announced the criteria. And basically, the criteria just means that <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard is not really going to make it into the debate. Um, there's just no way she can. Um, you know what? She hasn't had a chance of qualifying for a debate since the last debate she actually qualified for. Um, so this one's going to be in debate uh, just between Bernie and Biden. And, and I really wish that Tulsi would drop out. But she won't. Okay. So March 15th in Phoenix, um, it's going to be Bernie Biden. And it says that each candidate will have be required to have won at least 20% of the total number of pledged delegates in the 28 jurisdictions that will have held primaries and caucuses by the debate day, or about 374 delegates each. That is a lot, right? So each, um, Joe and Bernie have each gotten 500 delegates or more, right? <clears throat> I think Tulsi's gotten like two. Yeah, she's gotten two from American Samoa. So there's no way that she's going to ever, 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 ever qualify. So it's over for her. Um, nobody really considers her in the race. So when they talk about all the women are gone, like they're not even talking about Tulsi because they're like, everybody knows Tulsi has been out for months. Okay. She was out before Kamala dropped out. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Um, so the Demarche debate is going to be sponsored by CNN and Univision. I will be doing a live, um, you know, a, um, tweet, a live tweet session for that evening. Um, and it's going to be on February 25th, right? No, that was, that was the last one. It's going to be on March. Was it March? What? I'll find out when it's going to be. And then I'll let you know. Um, the February debate rules said that they only had to get a single delegate. So the March one is like way more. No fucking way Tulsi is ever, 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 ever going to do it. And ever since um, South Carolina, it's been pretty, pretty clear that Bernie is not going to be the president. He's not going to be the nominee. He pretty much doesn't have a chance because Bernie, he had this idea and like, a lot of people don't don't see through my eyes, so they can't see what I'm seeing. But Bernie thought he was going to win black votes just by um, using black faces and, you know, uh, waving around some old pictures from 1963. And he wasn't actually going to do anything that was specifically about black people. He didn't. He never really decided he was going to. Oh, I'm going to learn about these people so that I'll know what they need and what their needs are, and you know, listen to them. It wasn't about listening to us. It's about these are my policies, and I'm going to try to find a way where you fit into the framework of the white working class, the middle class, 
of, you know, who I care about. And it's always been obvious to anybody with, you know, eyes who can see what Bernie was trying to do. So I do feel bad for his, his black supporters because like, dude, you guys are like not even really thought about. And the way he uses people, you don't even know. What I wanted to talk about today is Bernie's ad. Bernie had us an ad that he put out on the actual internet. <laughs> and um <laughs> and it's got Cornell West. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the ad up, up queued up. Here it goes. And I'm going to play it for you so that you can hear exactly what I hear and why you'll know why I'm like, what the holy, what the is going on here? Because, um, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was actually shocking, um, to see the ad that he, he played. And I, I was like, wait, is this like on purpose? Are they doing this on purpose? Um, but yeah, they, it, it was really put out there on purpose. Um, nobody forced them to put it out. It wasn't, um, anything like somebody made it up, um, like a, a fan page or something like that. Like sometimes we'll see some ads and then we'll, they'll be kind of trash, you know, and we'll be like, why is this such trash? And it's really, um, uh, a fan made ad, right? You know, and some, some of the fan made ads look really, really good, but this one is actually made for the, um, for, for Bernie, I guess. Um, it is really horrifying. Um, and um, like they, they, everybody's got um, a comment about it, like about the music on the ad. <laughs> like that's not the point, but you know what? I guess it kind of is the point. Like it was super trash in the first place. Um, it should never have been used. So here, here we go. Right here, I'm going to play it. Hold on. That's Cornell West. That has a spiritual and moral coming together. Strong coming together. It's part of the genius of Hebrew scripture. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you're Buddhist, Hindu. It says the spreading of Hesed, the spreading of that steadfast love to the orphan, the widow, the fatherless, the motherless, the oppressed, the occupied. It's rooted in the best of America, but it looks to the world and it says a precious baby in Ethiopia, in Guatemala, it could be in Tel Aviv or Gaza, it could be in Argentina, it could be in New Hampshire, they all have the same value, they all have the same significance. You hear that shit? The music? Not a milk toast Leo neoliberal running against a gangster. Is he crazy? And spiritual power behind our movement. Are we gonna stay together? Are we gonna fight together? Are we gonna go all the way together? Behind Bernie Sanders. Let's do it. You hear that? <clears throat> Creative director was Rocky Owens. Ben Howman was the editor. This actually happened. This is an actual ad that um, I don't know if they're going to run this on TV. It looks like an internet ad. It better not be a television ad because it is scary as shit. And I want you guys to go on my page. I, I think that the, what did I say on that one was the fuck did I just watch? That's the title of it on my, on my um, uh, K high queen P page. Um, I think I may go ahead and put it on my Facebook page too, on my brave neck page. And, um, Fuck it, I'll upload it to my YouTube, okay? So that it's everywhere and you can see exactly what I'm seeing. And then that way, you know, you'll know how fucking batshit crazy these people are. They are batshit. They're losing their mind. I So I wake up today and, you know, um, I'm, I'm lazy, right? So I'm not really doing much, but I woke up, I woke up like, you know, at a normal time, like six o'clock in the morning. And I'm, I go on my Twitter because I was like, I, I, I had 
notifications coming in. And when I go to sleep, sometimes I turn on the notification. So it buzzes me. Okay. So I must have not felt the bu- buzzing all night. It's this little shit. One of these little shits, one of these Bernie people taking me to task about the crime bill. Now, when I was, the crime bill was passed, I was about 10 something. I don't know, something like that. Whatever. I was, um, maybe I was a little older. Maybe it was 12. Right. But, um, what the fuck does that have to do with me? Like, I didn't <laughs> know why you're yelling at me about the crime bill. Um, number one, number two, you're for Bernie and he signed it. I mean, you know, he voted for it and like, they have this idea that Bernie only voted for the crime bill because of the violence against women act. And that is not true. You know, it took me a while and uh, looking back through different articles, different, whatever. And I said, well, you know, I need to see what Bernie said himself at the time, because they're giving me his words that he's saying now about what he, what he believed then. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't go for me. Like I, I, that doesn't work for me. I need to see what you said at the time. So I go back to the time <clears throat> I'm looking, looking, looking. Eventually I hit on, um, a whole fucking ass press conference. So there's a whole ass press conference about Bernie, uh, with Bernie. And, um, I guess there's, um, a few other people say things on the press conference. Um, but Bernie is defending the crime bill. He is promoting the crime bill. He is explaining why the crime bill is good for Vermont. Um, he's not, I, you don't really hear the words violence against women act in, in the, in the thing you hear about money for cops, money for, uh, crime fighting, money for law enforcement. And you hear Bernie talk about he wanted extensions uh, past the five years of money for cops and whatnot, right? <clears throat> so this is a completely different story than what Bernie was, has been telling um, now or, or on the campaign trail. And um, shit, it's, it's a different story than he was telling in 2016. He was telling this Violence Against Women Act story, but that is not the case. Um, <clears throat> I don't like people who change the story when they need to, when it's com- convenient, that really annoys me, especially when they're using this, this thing as a weapon against somebody else. You know, um, I'm not going to say, oh, Biden's innocent because I don't feel that way. Um, I feel like he did, um, some of those provisions in there were his provisions that I don't like and, you know, that he doesn't like now in retrospect. And, you know, he's had to do some things with Obama, like where he reduced the crack cocaine disparity and he needs to do that further it needs to be even um and yes he was um, the one that pushed for it at the time because you know what he didn't know nobody knew that crack was just cocaine it was the same thing it wasn't something that was going to make you into a super anything um but this is what they're hearing from sociologists this was they're hearing from doctors this is what they're hearing from racist institutions, right? So you have the institutions that are seeming like these are the people that they need to listen to, right? Oh, they need to listen to sociologists. They need to listen. But the information the sociologists have and they have bad information in the first place because we live in a racist nation. We're, they're, they're passing racist information around from agency to agency, from place to place, from institution to institution about Black people. So, you know... <laughs> There's a reason why doctors or nurses, they seem to not think black people feel as much pain when we feel just as much pain as anybody else because of all the fucking lies and bullshit that's been going on. So they're believing this super predator shit. We believed it too. No lies because we are the ones that were actually the victims of the crimes and we're seeing people who have no remorse. Okay. There's, but it seems like they have no remorse because they're high. And when you're dealing with somebody that's just like, you know, you see nothing coming out of them and you're like, look what you just did. And, you know, and they're just stone, you know, you don't realize that, okay, they're not saying anything or reacting because their mind is fucked up because they're high. You haven't seen anybody on this drug before. You don't know what the fuck is going on. You're just like, they have no emotions. They're fucked up. They're super predators. Get them the fuck out of my neighborhood. Get them the fuck away from my kids. Get them. I need to have my people safe. And that's what the crime bill was. That was us for years. Black people were complaining that. Society didn't give a fuck, and they were just leaving us sitting there with crime. They were leaving us sitting there to, to die. That's what they were doing. You called 911. <clears throat> they didn't come in my neighborhood. You called 911 because somebody hurt you or somebody robbed you or somebody assaulted you. If they did come, it'd be an hour, two hours, three hours, sometimes six hours later, they would come and finally, oh, hey, you know, they'll show up. But by that time, what's happened? You know what I mean? And, and then the, also all the retaliations. So if we did call the cops and there was always re- retaliation, so, and then they didn't protect us from the retaliation. So we're feeling like, okay, we're, we're all, we're victims of all these crimes. 
Um, society's just leaving us down here to rot and there's nothing we can do about it. And then now <clears throat> we're coming on the other side of it and they're like, oh, how could you, um, how could you support him when he did the crime bill and you know what that did? Well, were you there at the time? Because if you were there at the time, you would know what we were going through and you'd know we didn't really know what the fuck to do and neither did they. So like, if you're not in the neighborhood, how could you know what to do? You're, you're in Washington, D.C. You don't know what the fuck we're going through. We're telling you all this shit that's bad. Oh, it's horrible for us. And it was. And so they're taking that and that's the information they have. And they're like, well, here's what we can do. We don't really know how to solve it. And still to this day, I haven't heard anybody explain how they were going to solve it without doing this. How, what, were you, what would you have done? And, you know, nobody really had, well, I wouldn't have done this and I wouldn't have done that. Okay, that's great. What you wouldn't have done. Okay, you wouldn't have done anything they did. But what would you have done? You know, how are you going to stop the people at the time who were doing these violent assaults? How are you going to stop them? What were you going to do? Because it's not like they were just picking up random people off the street. You look like you're going to do a crime and take you to jail. They wait till you do a crime and then they take your ass to jail. But they were given too much time. They weren't rehabilitating people. But at the same time, what, 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 do, what do you want us to do? We needed to fucking get them out of the neighborhood. We can't just let them keep attacking people, assaulting people, robbing people. You know, we're already poor, right? You know, I have, we have relatives. I have relatives that have been shot, relatives that have been stabbed, relatives that have been murdered. And I'm not, I'm not unique. I'm just the average, you know, if you were living in inner city at the time, your, your story is probably the same as mine or even worse. Okay. It's not going to be so much better. You know, it's not going to be like you were living some lovely life. Nobody was at all. Nobody was, you know, even people that are, the, that's how shit got to be the way it is. And a lot of us moved out eventually, you know, I, I moved out and then moved back. Okay. And it was, it was not as bad when I went back. Um, I went back in like 96, 97. It wasn't bad as it was in like 91, 92, 86, 80. Oh my God, 88. It was horrible in 1988. I was seeing drive-bys myself and I was like seven years old. And you know, you, you're just walking down the street and you hear, you know, you're like, what the fuck? And you don't know what to do. You're seven years old. But like to this day, all my whole generation has PTSD. We all have fucking anxiety. We're all fucked up, right? Because- of the shit that was going on, right? Now, you have white people that weren't there, or some of these younger kids that are black that weren't born until like 1998, 1999, 2000. They don't know what was going on, what we were living with at the time. So they could make a lot of judgment calls on things that they weren't there for. And um, it's unfortunate because, like, let's say things go back that way at some time in their life then they'll know what we're talking about and it won't be good, you know, because they <laughs> have made all these decisions of what should be done and what can't be done and what's okay and what's not. And they still haven't come up with anything that would have actually worked at the time. They, there's no solution that's perfect. There's never going to be. It was all we could do at the time. So we're having a lot of fights over the crime bill. And this is Bernie, 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 Bernie. Bernie has obfuscated the issue so badly to where he's made himself into this innocent, um, benevolent um, saint of a guy. Like he was just, I was just, I spoke against this and I spoke against that. But if you go back and look at the time, yeah, he gave us a floor speech. Oh, he loves doing that, you know, that way he can absolve himself of whatever the bad parts are, right? But he goes back home and he gives a press conference and he's like, Hey, I need, we need the money. We need this. We need these cops. We need that. And it's two different Bernie's we're talking about. So which Bernie are we talking about? Um, that's why I think like it's time for Bernie to drop out because <laughs> he makes things worse. You know, he makes it go on so long. He'll drag it out all the way to the convention. He's angry. He's bringing all these angry people and you know, they're angry at the people who were the victims at the time about the policies that <laughs> Bernie signed on to. So it's like, it's like such a mind fuck. It's a, it's like a, a game, right? With them, it, all it is is a game. It's not real. <clears throat> That's another thing. Um, he's starting to pit black people against black people with his um, little games that he's playing to so he can be president. And that's unfair. A lot of us, you know, we see through his games and shit. But, you know, a lot of the younger ones don't. They haven't had one, one of a Bernie in their life, right? We've all had one at this point. We've had somebody that made all these stupid promises. They're, oh, I can do this and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And then when you get down to it and you support this person, you realize that they're full of shit. They couldn't do any of that. Um, they never had any attention doing any of that. They never had no plan of 
doing any of that. Like, so what's Bernie's plan beyond the primary? You know, he's spent the whole entire primary <clears throat> salting the earth, you know, um, burning all the bridges. So what he wants everybody to turn around and, and then support him and be, you know, all in for him after how he's treated them. Uh, that's not going to happen. You know, you can't you destroy people's reputations and then have their people turn around and want to be totally for you They're, They'll be like, Oh, is there a third party? Maybe somebody will run third party. Right. So, um, nope. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, so you got Bernie out here, then they're doing this angry, 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 angry shit. Um, and I'm tired. You know, I've been, we've been fighting, um, a really, really long fight, it feels like. And it's been on two battlefronts. It's been on the left. It's been on the right. We're fighting against the the, the rollback of all of our rights. Um, um, basically, the ruination of our constitution. It's like we need to write a new constitution at this point because we're seeing it fail, right? And then at, on the left, we have people that don't even give a shit about that the country's in a, a bad place. They All they care about is that their agenda is not moving forward it could all collapse and they'll be like, oh, well, that's because we didn't get what we want. And it's so sad to see such selfishness and the selfishness is disguised as benevolence, right? Well, I want you to have health care, but do you, is that what you're really worried about? No, you're not worried about me. You're worried about you not having to pay your student loans or you getting this or something free that Bernie promised you. And that's what it's really about. And that's, um, <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not going to even say what I think about that. Um, <laughs> so I am very um, tired of that bullshit right now. I'm not going to deal with it. Um, so, you know, I'm blocking a lot of people. I don't give a fuck. I'm blocking everybody. Um, Deval Patrick, he finally endorsed um, Joe Biden. Um, a lot of people are, are, are have endorsed him. Um, like it's been endorsement city for the last two weeks. Bernie's not getting enough, any of them. Mm-mm. Not at all. And Bernie really does need huge youth turnout. They're trying to do these um, Bernie math. Um, to, you, you remember last time we had a lot of Bernie math. They don't call it Bernie math exactly, but they're doing the same thing. Um, and then, you know, they're like, oh, you we, you need this much and this much and that much. Bernie needs hella youth turnout in order to defeat Trump. And he would need hella youth turnout to beat Biden. And that's not what's what seemed to happen. He did not win many of the states that he said he was going to win. He said he was going to win a whole lot of states. He did not win them. And he is behind. And the only way he can catch up is if Biden falters. And Biden doesn't seem to feel like faltering. Um, he's ready to he's ready to go. Um, the next round of primaries does favor Biden. It does not favor Bernie at all. Um, it was funny because before um, we did talk about how the, the primaries on Super Tuesday favored Biden, I mean Bernie, and then the ones after that favored Biden. And Bernie is finally, he's then started um, canceling things that he was doing, like um, events in Mississippi, right? So he's canceling stuff. And Biden's just going out and he's doing his thing. And we could tell that um, Bernie's campaign's dying. It's it's one of the dying campaigns. It's at the at the end. And he won't, I like, I'm worried that he won't stop until the convention. And like, I think that if he's going to do um, all of this negativity, he's going to keep the negativity going. He should just not bother showing up to the convention. He should just not come. He can say he's sick or whatever he wants. Just don't show up because nobody needs the problems. We need to have um, some sort of unity this time um, like we didn't have last time for Hillary. Like, I mean, I feel bad that we didn't have the unity for Hillary. I tried, but they didn't want unity. What they wanted was a fight. And that they, they seem to be taking that same tact this time. They're like, oh, you know, they want to fight us over... Well, I'm not really sure what they want to fight us over, <laughs> over exactly. So that they want to fight us because we're neoliberal, whatever's, corporatists, uh, bootlickers. And, you know, I'm like, you're a child. You don't know the first thing about life. Um, you think that that's the way you get what you want is to, you, to attack people that are on your side. Like if we're, but you would want us to turn around and support you, even though this is how you treat us. And this is how you talk to us. And this is how you see us. Like, this is not, it's not going to happen. So it's not happening for Bernie. You can tell the misery in the air. You can feel the miasma 
of of loss coming on. Oh, it's all around us. It's touching my face. Oh, the cloud of sad. And I don't feel fucking bad for them. I don't feel one fucking bit bad for them. I feel like Bernie is the main problem here. Because he promised these kids a whole lot. He makes promises that are stupid. That he can't keep. And he doesn't intend to keep. Free college. Free health care. Free this. Free that. And he was going to do all this with rallies. Oh, I'm going to hold a rally in Kentucky. And that rally is going to be so big, so scary, that it's going to scare McConnell into passing my health care. Yeah, I don't believe he ever believed that. Bernie filed to run for his own seat again, I think before he even started running for president. He knew he was going to lose. Okay? He knew he was going to lose. So, really, his his supporters need to calm the fuck down. If you don't want to vote for Biden, fine. Go the fuck on. We'll leave everybody else alone that does. You don't have to be a Democrat. You don't have to be on the left. You can go run off with Trump if you want. We'll leave everybody else alone. Don't make everybody else's day harder or life harder or job harder or whatever harder just because they don't agree with you. You know, stop picking on people. So I've been blocking y'all and I'm going to continue blocking y'all. I'm going to block the fuck out of Bernie supporters until they grow up because I do not need any stupid children harassing people on my page. (laughs) So I do have some sympathy cards that I'm going to be giving out today. Um, they don't seem so nice because they're like thoughts and prayers and get over it and all that other shit. But get the fuck over it. All right. Uh, most of us did not get the person we wanted. We did not get who we picked. You didn't get who you picked either. Too fucking bad. So sad. Suck my dick. I don't care. All right. I don't care. All right. We didn't get who we wanted and I didn't get who I wanted because of you, Bernie bros. And how you torched. And, and, and smeared and you disgusting people, how, how you treated my candidate. And what you want sympathy, I'm not giving it to you. You're not getting it this time. You got it last time and you took it and you felt, oh, good. And you used that and you slashed out at everybody constantly, no, nonstop. You never stopped. And it's been fucking four years. And you still are still lashing out about losing. I don't care if you say it's rigged. I don't care what you say. Too bad. So sad. Oh, well. You shouldn't have spent the last four years harassing, attacking, abusing, and, and and just trolling the fucking world. Now you, nobody cares anymore what happens to you or, or what happened to your candidate. Nobody cares if he got cheated. Nobody cares. Oh, cheating the DNC. I heard that so much this week. I want to throw up. The DNC rigged the primary. No, they didn't. No, they, they stopped the voting. No, they didn't. They threw away the ballots. They didn't have any. I didn't even have access to the fucking ballots. Okay. DNC does not run primaries. They run caucuses. And caucuses are stupid. All right. So I'm going, that was the first half of the episode. I'm going to go and do something and then I'm going to return and I'm going to do the second half. All right. Okay. I'm back. So for this half of the episode, I need to talk about three things. I forgot one of them, but (laughs) Mm -hmm, because this is a Republican debate. No, (laughs) Um, I'm going to talk about what happens to the delegates um, once a candidate drops out. Um, We're going to talk about black voters um, and we're going to talk about uh, Bernie's problems with black voters. So, you know, I guess that's really two things, but two parts of one thing. So let's first talk about what happens to delegates after candidates drop out. When a candidate drops out, there are delegates left on the table. Some of those delegates get reapportioned out to the candidates that are left. And some of those delegates become free agents. Which ones are which, right? Okay, so <clears throat> there are t- the two different kinds are the statewide delegates, right? Um, so if these are all pledge delegates that we're talking about. Um, that are that are won by the candidates already right um <clears throat> some of them are free agents and some of them get um 
um, put back into the, and, and they get reapportioned out some to Bernie and some to uh, Joe. So the statewide pledge delegates, these are the ones that are allocated to the candidates um, while they're in the race and they, it, they, they're for the whole state, right? Um, when, and it goes when the state elects their delegates. So this is something that'll happen um, at, the, at the state convention. Um, it's be, it's usually happens after the primary, but before the, um, the convention in July. So usually they'll have a statewide convention and, or whatever they do it. And they, once you hit the 15% threshold, then you get delegates, right? So if the campaign is not active, um, no longer active, then those the, uh, delegates have to go out again. Mm. These are the delegates that are proportionally reallocated to Biden and Sanders. They're going to go out and they're going to um, be divided out again. And then you have the other delegates that are the district level pl pledge delegates. Those are the ones that become free agents. So if you're a district delegate, you can vote for whoever the fuck you want. If you're the state one, you're, you're pledged to vote for whoever they um, portion you out to. That doesn't mean that it always happens that way or that they're legally bound to do that. <clears throat> but the, the district level delegates that have already been won, they're not reallocated. Um, and I don't know whether this is because they have already been like, you know, allocated out and then you have to wait till you go to the state convention to allocate them out. And if you drop before the state convention, then they just give them to somebody else. Um, but that's how it is. They are bound by a pledge. These are, it's just a pledge. If you are a delegate and you're like, huh, you know what? They, um, I don't like this guy anymore. I don't want to be with him. He's crazy, right? Like say it was something with like John Edwards, you found out about his affair. You're just, oh, oh God, no. Then you could have went to somebody else. Um, you know, um, not that it happens usually, but it happens, right? So even if your candidate hasn't dropped out, your delegates could leave you. And it would usually probably, I would think, be something major. Like, you know, there'd have to be something terrible that you've done for your pledged delegates. It'd just be like, oh, hell no. Peace out, dude. So that is how the delegates, what happens to the delegates <clears throat> once you're, um, once you drop out of the race. So there are a number of delegates that are in that situation. Um, and here are the delegates that we have for the people that have dropped out, right? Elizabeth Warren has 49, Mike Bloomberg has 48, Pete has 26, and Amy has seven. The majority of those are district level, and so they're going to be the free agent ones um, at the convention. 88 are district level, and 42 are at state level. So 42 of those are going to get reallocated out, but there are 88 on the table. So depending on how they um, end up being, they might, you know, how tight things are between Bernie and Biden. It, it might have an effect on, you know, but I don't think so at this point. Um, so that is how, <laughs> the, that is what happens to the delegates. Because people have been asking, what happens to the delegates? What happens to the delegates? So I looked it up and that is what happens to the delegates. So now you know what happens to the delegates. Now let's talk about the black vote. A lot of people are like, oh, wow. Um, you know, at, right after South Carolina, right after South Carolina, we had a lot of kind of racist hot takes going on. Um, you know, uh, people were very upset that black voters um, pretty much ruined Bernie's life, right? So we, the black voters, they were like, mm -mm, we're going Biden, right? <clears throat> People are like, why? Why would they do that? Oh, they have all these theories, right? Oh, this is so horrible. Um, how could we do Bernie like this? We don't know Bernie, okay? So if you have two old men, you know one, you don't know the other guy, and you can see that the other, the other candidates aren't going to be viable, um, you have to reassess what you're doing and you, you have to pick between one of them. So who do you pick? The guy that you've known that's been around your community for a hundred fucking years since he's been, uh, since 1950 something when he was telling Corn Pop to get out of the pool, um, without his, uh, swim cap on, or do you pick the, the guy that <clears throat> throws civil rights photos at you, but he can't account for anything he's done since that day? Anytime that he's done anything for black people. Um, and I have video of him being asked by Charlemagne, the God on um, Breakfast Club. He didn't, he, he cannot come up with something. Um, and that is one of the funniest things about this campaign because I have um, spent a lot of time, you know, asking people, okay, so what has he done um, in the intervening years? And, you know, they get very mad. Oh, wow, you just want people to die without health care. Like, okay, so I'm sorry, but you're not going to shame me um, 
into going with Bernie by saying that I'm a horrible person or whatever. You've been saying these things about me for like <clears throat> five years. Um, you know, um, P the rest of the world's starting to catch up to me because you're saying it about everybody else now. Because I mean, I used to be alone where they were just like, you're just the worst. And they would target me. But now they're spreading it out amongst everybody. And it's not working. Um, this trying to shame people and, and you know, oh, you're a bad person. If you don't love Bernie, that, that shit doesn't work. Because we're like, hey, you're in a cult, dude. And they, they get mad and they're, oh, they would make a big, you call us a cult. Ah, how could you? And, <clears throat> you know. I got all these hysterics, all these histrionics. Oh, they're oh, tears, tears coming down their face. Really? Do you really think that you are going to spend another four years crying and bitching and moaning about how you were done so badly and, and cheated, everybody cheated you and, oh, it was rigged. You really think we're going to fucking give that energy? I, I'm not doing it this year. So when, when I start seeing the, the rig shit, shit, I just block them. I'm not, I don't have time for this shit. I'll say what I have to say about, oh, really? It's rigged? Because they didn't start saying rigged when it was 90% white. The, the vote was 90% white, you know, um, and Bernie was winning. As soon as it flipped to where the, the vote was 60% black, oh, it's rigged. And, and I've noticed that they do that every time. Every time um, black people start voting, it becomes rigged. It becomes just everybody's cheated. Um, it's the establishment after him. We're not a, we're not the fucking establishment. Um, I don't know why they think that we somehow became the establishment. We're the black voters, and we're who brought brought Biden over the motherfucking finish line. So while you're calling us um, some sort of elitist, which, what we've never been that not in this country. Um, <clears throat> Chet, we're not even really allowed if we have any money, <laughs> and we get treated like shit for it because you know. Mm. look, that black person has money. Racism's over. So <laughs> no, Bernie um, does not appeal to black people. Um, I really wish people would, would stop uh, lying on polls because they had polls where Bernie was up to 50, he was up over Biden with black voters. And I'm like, okay, so this is a recent occurrence. It happened over the last month and he's, he built himself up and I'm like that, these aren't real numbers. And if you look at the charts, of him of, of of Bernie and and Biden with the black vote, you'll see it rise for Bernie until the day before uh, Super Tuesday, or maybe a few days before, and then shoop, it shoots right right back down um, with Bernie and Biden's goes right back up. How does that happen? How how over a three period day period of time do we see um, Biden regain all his his support? and Bernie lose all that extra support because it wasn't real, okay? Um, and part of my what my theory is, is that white, um, white Bernie bros are so obsessed, because they are, that they they are still doing that thing, because I've seen, they, they've done this in front of me before. Um, they pretend to be black for polls. I wish they would stop it because it, it makes it so much hard, because we're already notoriously hard to um, poll black people. It's hard to poll black people. <clears throat> And then you have these guys over here playing games because they want to try to convince black voters that black people are with Bernie. So they're going to go on the they, first one on the polls. They're, ah, yes, I'm black, you know, and uh, I, I told them not to do it in 2016. I said that it's just going to uh, psych your mind out. It's going to fuck mind fuck you because you they start believing in it and or other people believe it. It's it, they, they think it's going to be like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And what happens is black people don't do what they prescribe for us to do. We don't show up for Bernie Sanders. We never have. And it, there's a lot of um, polls that that come out, um, surveys that come out. Oh, black people like Bernie just fine. We're fine with Bernie. Honestly, if you take Bernie away from campaigning and he's just himself as a senator, uh, I like him just fine. You know, um, I don't like him for, for president. I I'm just not interested in him being president. I don't need all that rhetoric. I don't need the anger. Um, I'm tired of, I, we already have a super angry president who's also fucking stupid. So we have a stupid, angry guy there. And I just want somebody who's fucking calm, who will calmly do some shit. And that if anybody has to scream, it can be me. All right. But no, Bernie has to do a lot of screaming and I'm not interested. So that is Bernie's problem with black voters. He doesn't really know us or get to know us. And I did do a, a thing where I showed on um, Brave underscore writing um, that there was a there was a, a a person who had their family 
um, in a hotel, a mo, mm, uh, whatever, a motel down in um, South Carolina. And Bernie was there and um, Bernie was in their hotel. And apparently everybody at the hotel was just fucking over him, tired of him. You could see there's a picture of him eating alone. Um, um, a teenager had got, gone and asked if, you know, they could take a picture with him and he brushed them off. No, um, that's it. You know, no, not, no, not right now. Nothing like that. Just no. And, you know, basically he just wanted to eat alone. So he was there by himself alone eating. And um, that is how you lose. Because when he did that in, 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 in a in a rest in um, a hotel, right? A motel. And he did it in the dining area. So everybody there knows the servers know um, the servers, you know, they're already probably having to put up with his bullshit. So they know the people that are there know everybody saw what he did. And this is just, this is a, a room full of black people. And, you know, they're like, Oh, okay. You can't even take a picture with the kid, you know, teenager, you know, um, you're supposed to be the one that's for the youth, right? You're, you care about the youth, but uh, one of our youth comes up to you and they want to say hi. Then you're brushing them off. No. Okay. So I have the picture of that and I have the, the story that's on Brave Underscore Writing. Go ahead and look and read the story. It's, um, it really opens your eyes about why Bernie is not connecting with black people. Um, black people in the South. Okay. My, my, my family's from the South. Forgive me. You speak, right? Okay. And if you're like white or you are one of those, um, Northern Negroes or whatever, or Western, you have to, um, you, Mm, you greet people is what it, what it is, right? You greet people, you're polite, you're respectful. And like, you don't call people out their first name, you know, you don't know them, you know, <laughs> you don't know them very well. If you do call, um, call them by their first name, you have to, God damn it. you have to use a prefix like, um, miss this, miss that, misses this, miss that. Anyways, it, it, you, you just have to have your manners. And if you don't have any manners, you're not going to make it very far with black people. And um, a lot of people are like, well, that's the South. And, you know, <laughs> that's not how black people are all over. Okay. Um, I'm in Alaska. And that's how they are up here. So, yeah, you do have to speak. Um, like you can't just like go in somebody's house and, you know, like you don't say hi to the head of household or whoever, you know, whose house it is without, you know, before you go wandering around, like, <laughs> but you know, the, it's different for some people, but like Bernie, I like you've seen him go to church before and, um, he'll talk to you while you're eating and stuff like that. That's not, that's not a good thing. Um, it's not what you do. <laughs> and it's like, nobody's taught, nobody taught him the rules of life or something. I don't know. But, um, he, he, he's finding it hard to make inroads with black. Well, I'm, I'm glad he's finding it hard because, um, I don't really feel like he deserves to make very many inroads because he's not, Bernie didn't, didn't craft his policy with us in mind in the first place. And it's, it's obvious unless you're somebody who wants to be naive and, you know, the scales over your eyes or whatever, you can clearly see that these, um, these policies were not crafted to solve our problems. Um, they are crafted to solve white people's problems. Um, and sure we have this, this, those problems affect us too. Yeah. But those, that is the extent of, you know, what their problem, they don't have any deeper problems with society that are race-based and none of Bernie's solutions really do much to, um, work on the disparity between races and yeah, he's come out with some stuff this, this time, but you can, I mean, come on, when you are president, you're going to get a few things passed, right? What is your priority and what are you going to work on? He says all of it at once, which is so annoying because it's like, dude, you can't work on it all, all at once like that. That's not how life works. Um, you have to have priorities because the Senate's not going to do that with you. And anyways, we're, our, we're working with Mitch McConnell as the head. We don't, we don't really know for sure that Democrats are going to take back over the Senate. And with Bernie on the ticket at the top of the ticket, it's, it's less, it's much less likely than if it's somebody else. Um, he, he attracts a very loyal, dedicated following, but it's not as deep as they make themselves out to see, to be. Um, they'll, they'll, they, they act like they are the majority sometimes. And, you know, they, they, they talk like that and they're not, they're, they've never been the majority. Bernie's what at, I mean, like he can get up to like 28%, <laughs> uh, but he's not going to go much past there of the party. 
Um, and that's what happens. This is why Joe ended up getting um, 60, 70% of black voters um, in the South. And we have other contests coming up. So we have another contest coming up, which is Mississippi. Mississippi is coming up and Bernie has canceled his rally in Mississippi. Why did he do that? Who knows? Um, I guess he wants to go and concentrate on the areas that he thinks he's going to do well in. But what you have, is you have a problem with, this is a problem because black people are, are in Mississippi. Mississippi has a lot of black people, especially in our prime, in the primary. And you're just going to give up on the South then you're just saying that you don't really care about those voters. <laughs> now he canceled this plan rally in, um, and he's going to Mich- going to go to Michigan instead. Now, what is the difference between those two states? That's right. One's super black. <laughs> and then the other one is not as much. You got Detroit, but you don't have like, um, so much, um, black people in, in, in such high numbers, you know, to where in some places they like to where they outnumber white people in the primary. It's just not, it's not like that. So he's basically giving up on the Jackson, Mississippi rally to go to Michigan. And that is, he's shifting his focus to the Midwest. Um, and the, I, I, that just means all the rest of the Southern states are going to fall. And um, the focus of the canceled Mississippi rally was racial justice, which is really, it's really ironic that he canceled that rally. I mean, this is Mr. Civil Rights, right? He, oh, he fought for your rights. He fought for your rights. Why are you canceling your racial justice rally? Why are you leaving Mississippi? Why haven't, why aren't you competing for black votes? And he's never really ever wanted to compete for black votes. He just wants to get that. And he thinks that if he um, says the right things or, or hires Cornell West to yell on TV or whatever, um, hires Nina to yell, hello, somebody, and then that's going to bring it in. It did not bring it in. It's not bringing it in. Um, and really, uh, he should know that his choices of black surrogates has almost done the opposite of what he intended them to do. They're not very well liked within the black community at, the, at this moment, right? So you have Bri Bri. She's who? Who? Okay, that's nice. Yeah, I'm sure she's a nice woman um, when you get down to it and you talk to her. But um, her style, um, uh, her manner of um, engagement with the masses, it it's not like she's even talking to black voters. Um, she's, it just feels it, it just feels like she's talking to white people. Or and then like the, the the things that she she does where she covers up for the Bernie Bros and stuff like that, you know that doesn't sit well with a lot of us. And there's and you know they they act like black people can't see whatever's going on online. It's one of the weird weirdest phenomenons about white people. They act like black people all over can't see Twitter, can't see, like even if they're not on Twitter, they can still see your tweets. Okay, they can still see what you write if they want to Google. Uh, Bernie Sanders and racism, black voters, there's going to be tweets that pop up and guess who's they are. They're your racist tweets. So, I mean, like I used to do that before I, it wasn't tw- tweets, you know, before I really was into politics though, I would Google stuff like that, you know, just to see who was doing crazy shit. Right. So I would know who not to vote for. And back then the internet wasn't as, as great as it is now. And um, a lot of the posts that would come up would be like comments from somewhere like uh, daily coast or somewhere like that, or some sort of message board. But I, that would give me an idea of what was going on and what black people were saying. So I would look for to see what the black people were saying about the other side or about the, and you know, that was um, one of the reasons why I was comfortable with um, at the end of 2008, cause I really wasn't on online. I was really busy working. Um, I was, I was like, okay, I'm, I hope, I hope Obama, Obama gets it at the end. Even though I did not vote in the primary um, it's a caucus out here and I had to work. Um, but I was like, oh, I started at the end, started leaning a little bit more towards him. But another reason was really because of Michelle. But it was a, a lot of the reason was because of the comments I was seeing from black people um, at the time and about how they were being treated. And, um, you know, that, that's water under the bridge. It's a long time ago. But that did sway my vision, my view of how I saw the situation. And last um, campaign, I was the one with all the, <laughs> with all the racist and I, I would, and yeah, you know, I did learn, um, certain things about how to make, you know, search engine optimization and whatever. Um, and I would kind of work to make mine 
come up at the top so that people could see what I was talking about, you know? So you use a lot of keywords <laughs> back in the day. That was, that was one of the things <laughs> now I don't even know, you know, <laughs> who knows. Right. But, um, I would, I would, um, cause I wanted people to like, I was like putting out alert, like, Hey, wait a second. The, this guy, something's not right. Sure. He did, um, March for civil rights. That's great. Why are his supporters so nasty? Why are they so mean? Why are they so rude? And why do they appropriate everything of blackness, like the whole civil rights movement? Um, there was posters of Bernie and MLK, like like Bernie was teaching MLK. Like it was just horrible. It was a horrible campaign. And um, and these were just memes that that his supporters were coming up with. But I ended up having problems with people over um them saying certain things about black people. Um, when we chose, when black people chose Hillary, you know, um, like we had Stockholm syndrome and all kinds of nonsense. And, you know, they, they, they try to minimize our intelligence. Like we're stupid, um, or infantilize us. Oh, we're like, we're children and we just need them to raise us. Um, and they play Bernie off as this white savior man, who's going to save the dumb black people who don't know any better, who's so dumb that they would go off with racist Hillary or racist this and that when Bernie fought for their rights. And there's some sort of um, expectation that some of them have, like, um, like we owe him, right? Um, which I have not appreciated at all. Like, um, uh, to be honest, I am, I am in my 30s. So I was not alive at any point in time when Bernie was active in doing anything for Black people um, as a whole. And he cannot come up with anything since he's been in the House or the Senate that he's done for Black people. Um, so you're taking somebody and you're saying, oh, this person has been fighting for your rights for 50 years. And then you say, okay, well, so what has he done um, since 1963? I listed it out. There were so many zeros that there was actually nothing but zeros after 1963. You cannot find anything. Um, I've looked for things. I cannot find anything. Um, I've looked for... Um, his diversity worksheets. He had some of the worst diversity in his office um, for years. He was uh, on par with, uh, there was a, a, a Republican that was just as bad almost, but he was the worst. Bernie was the worst. Um, so he's not, all, he's not really kept up with whatever the spirit of the civil rights movement was. It wasn't just about, okay, we're going to desegregate. And then now we're not going to hire you because that's basically what Bernie did. Bernie was mayor. Bernie was a representative. Bernie was a senator. I mean, <laughs> I guess he is a senator. And like senators can have large, large staff. Um, and he wasn't hiring black people. And so we have been looking for his black employees from before the campaign of 2015. And we have not found any. And that to me is one of the biggest things because black people will go and look and they'll be like, okay, so who do you hire? Because that's one of that's most one of the most important things. You talk about economic justice. You talk about that, right? You say you want an economic equality, you want economic justice, you want racial justice, but you do not put that into practice in your hiring practices. That just shows that you're a complete fraud, period. You you're just talking. You're just talking. You don't practice what you preach. But hiring people is a part of their fucking economic justice. You have to hire them so that they can make money. And if you're not, if you're only hiring white and, and everybody on your staff is a white male that's at the top, then you are just keeping up the same old bullshit status quo traditions. And you're like, oh, well, uh, I hire only the best one for the job. And it's funny how that's always a white man, huh? It shows how you see people. Because I'd be like, you know, I'm the type of person that I like a little bit of everybody around me. I would notice if I was only hiring white dudes. I'd be like, oh, hell no. Not another white dude. You know, mm -mm. let me get something else. Nope. Anything. Anybody. Because I'll just take the best out of the next group, right? There's a, okay, maybe you might be have all the qualifications I need. But I have an office full of white dudes. There's no diversity. I can't hire you. I can't just hire another one of you because it, it's just, it. I can't do that. It's unfair to everybody else because it doesn't, it means nobody else is getting a chance. And the reason you have all these, all your ducks in a row, it's probably because you're a white man and you've been getting the benefit of the doubt. You've been getting privileges that other people haven't been getting. So I don't know if you're necessarily the best, you know? So I have to take you and gauge you between everybody else. And if it, it, it'll usually turn out that you're really great on paper, but when I get you in front of me, and I've done this before, 
you're not what I'm looking for. You know, there's, I just don't, mm-mm. I will not ever have an office that's all one way, you know? I'm not going to have hire all black people because you know what? Y'all going to get on my nerves. But I'm definitely not going to hire all white people because come on, man. Everybody needs a job. Everybody needs an opportunity. If you're not, if you're not going to share opportunity between amongst everyone, then it's not justice. You're not doing justice. Okay. What you're doing is the status quo. So I'm into justice. And Bernie is not so into justice. Um, he says he is. But a lot of people try to like make it seem like, okay, well, he did this in 1963. That's him forever. He's that same guy. He's that same kid that was out there and giving a fuck about Martin Luther King. Is he? No. Mm -mm. There's been many things that have gone on over the years. There have been many protests. There have been many fucking things that have gone on with the black people. Bernie hasn't been there. At any time, he could have said, hey, you know, I was involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s. Um, he could have started that in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. And he could have said, hey, I need to help you guys out. I'm going to get you some 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 attention by coming out here and, and showing my support. I'm going to march with you. I'm going to fight with you. Bernie wasn't there. There's activists in his state that have been looking for him to do that, to, to support their causes, um, to just talk to them. Bernie doesn't do that. So you have all these problems and you wonder why Bernie doesn't get the black vote. Bernie is why Bernie doesn't get the black vote. Bernie is his own in his own way. And I'm not even talking about his supporters and what they do to drive people away. I'm just talking about him. Um, you know, you cannot treat us like we are a second, uh, an afterthought and make all your policies and craft all your policies before you ever come and talk to us about what, what we need. So our needs weren't really included because he never really talked to us. He's thinking about what he would need if he was in that situation. Black people are not all poverty in prisons. We're not poverty, prisons, welfare, and that that's it. You know, they, there's a whole lot more to what goes into being black. Black people, even if you got a lot of money, you don't got a lot of money, we tend to be in the same neighborhood. Not like white people. White people, oh, they run off. We'll stay in the same neighborhood or close by. Or maybe there would be a rich section to the to the neighborhood. Uh, and that's how it was in L.A. We have, you know, what wealthier sections where that will be up. But we're still in the same city, you know, and they will gradually get richer as you go up. But the black people did not go and run off, you know. Um, some of them did to Diamond Bar or some shit like that. But <laughs> um, a lot of them stayed right there. So that's why we have black neighborhoods in. Well, they're not as black as they were, but we have black neighborhoods like Baldwin Hills and Ladera Heights and stuff like that. Um where we all like, you know, we, we can get there. It's not that far from our homes, but it's still a nice neighborhood and it's for the rich black people. And, um, that's just not, it's just not the way, um, Bernie just doesn't understand how black people live. And he doesn't understand that we're not all poor. I don't think because the way he talks about us, it's like, okay, I get that. But you know, we have some issues that black people who are not poor have to deal with. What about those? And you know, I, I don't think he's ever even thought about it. Because when you associate blackness with poverty and then, I mean, you're like, oh, okay, well, if you're not poor, then you're fine. Well, that's not necessarily true. Maybe I'm being held back at work because I'm black. Maybe I am doing well, but I sh should be doing much better because they're holding me back on purpose. Maybe I'm, I'm there. I, I know what I'm, I'm dealing with some bullshit at work and, you know, I'm stuck and I'm, I'm in a role and they won't let me move up. There's a glass ceiling for me, right? Because I'm black and I'm training people and they're going up ahead of me, but I'm still making decent money. So you're just not even going to have anything to say about me. And that, um, you, that that's, if you're doing a, a, a justice agenda, then you have to hit every part. And he's, he just, he misses the mark and it makes you just go to someone else. Cause you're like, you're promising all these big radical things, but what you're not promising is to make things right for everybody. You you can't because you don't even know what's wrong. Um, Alabama, we're only won 9%. 9% of black voters. Nine. 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 I got, I mean, I, like I've been getting trolled a lot about how stupid black people are for going with Biden. That's another thing that really drives away black voters because we can see you. I haven't voted yet. Hello. I have not voted. 
Okay. <laughs> it's it, I haven't had my turn. There's a lot of black people that haven't had our turn to vote. We can see you talking to other black people. We can see what you say. A lot of the shit you do feels very racist. And I don't care if you have a black person that is willing to repeat the crap that you say. It doesn't make it any better. It doesn't make you right. It doesn't make them right. You know, it's horrible, right? So, and that's why, like, a lot of the reason why people, they come around, they're like, oh, well, why don't you guys defend Dina Turner? No, you guys are busy defending her all the time. Why would we defend her? She's fine. When she says things like, um, the, the way she, she does where she tries to say that we're uh, stereotyping them and, oh, it's race, Bernie Bros is racist, her and Freebie, it's racist to call you're, you're it's the guy that's cyber stalking you and abusing you and harassing you and following you from place to place. You're the one that's in the wrong because you called him a Bernie bro. And and he, uh, you've marginalized all the black supporters. No, that has nothing to do with it. So, like, I'm so tired of that stupid line um, that I, I just I can't even fucking deal with it anymore. I just block people on site when they do that. And, oh, God, another line that I'm really tired of is, oh. Somebody said poo poo pee pee to you, and now you don't want everybody to have health care. Mm, okay, that's great. You know, that shit does not work on me. You know what I mean? It's like you had to be such an asshole. You'd rather be an asshole on the internet than get everybody health care because I'm I'm not the one that's controlling you. I don't control you, your attitude, or how you treat people. How you treat people matters. How you treat people really matters. So what did we fucking do today? We did um, <laughs> super delegates, um, Sanders. And his Mississippi cancellation, how Bernie does not connect with black people. Um, those are really, really important topics. And we're gonna see a lot more of the problems Bernie has with black voters coming up in the future because we have some more states coming up. It's not gonna go well for him. Um, the, um, the states that are still coming up that are left to vote. Um, I don't think that he's going to make, because that's his, his new strategy. Um, right now is to go ahead and try to win over win over black voters to win the um to, to win the election. He has to steal us from Biden. Go look at you, go look at your supporters. Why the fuck would we want to join you? I don't care if you've got young black people uh wrapped around your finger, you're not gonna get us. Why the fuck would we want to join that shit? Hell no. So <laughs> Bernie's not going to do too good. It's not going to work. I'm so sorry. I feel bad for, no, I don't. I feel so bad for you. But like, I'm giving out sympathy cards all day and I'll be, keep on giving out sympathy cards. Oh my God. I didn't tell you about Nina Turner. Had a meltdown. It's on my timeline. If you have not been around or whatever, go look on my timeline. Nina sat up there and lost her fucking mind. Um, okay. So maybe, um, I, she was talking to Hillary Rosen. Maybe she shouldn't have said, um, that Nina doesn't have the standing to say whatever she was going to say. But beyond that, she was right about what she was saying. Um, Nina, Nina is getting that quote wrong and she has been getting that quote wrong. It's an, a Martin Luther King quote about the white moderate and they've been all getting it wrong for months and years in their in the burning campaign and they get it wrong on purpose in order to like try to make <laughs> make it seem like it's your political beliefs that um MLK was talking about rather than what he was really talking about was the silence of the white moderate is is the problem white moderates not speaking out not wanting you to speak out wanting you to you know just wait 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 that the the, the timidness that was what he was talking he wasn't talking about um whether you believe in radical um, economic policy or not, it wasn't about economic policy. It was about racial justice. So, um, Nina has been getting that wrong for a long time, and she knows it. And that's why she got all mad and hysterical. So, if you have time, go on my timeline and look. It's my birthday on the eighth, so that is not today. Um, today's Saturday. Um, that is tomorrow on Sunday. So come by, stop by, say hi to me on my birthday. Happy birthday. Um, you can donate to the podcast at Bravenac at PayPal. Yeah, for my birthday. And Venmo, Super Brave 81. And Cash App is Bravenac. 
So go ahead and donate to the podcast for my birthday. Yeah. And um, I will talk to you next time, probably on Monday. I love y'all. Bye. This has been Brave in the K-Hive podcast. The only place where you can find me, Yanka, a woman who is is bullying the entire revolution by myself. Yes, they actually give me full credit and I, I love it. So like the show, um, subscribe to the show. <clears throat> you can leave me voicemails, I guess. Um, a couple people did and I didn't know you could do that. So I listened to them. So if you want to say something mean, go ahead and leave me voicemail. <laughs> Donate to the show at Brave and Act on PayPal. Cash App or Super Brave 81 on Venmo. All right, you guys. Love you. Bye.